Hello and welcome to the Science Learning Centre's Christmas Science Experiments. We have a range here of science experiments you can do at the Christmas dinner table or any suitable occasion throughout the year. Please remember, some of these experiments use naked flames and boiling water, so make sure children are supervised and clear anything out of the way that could be flammable just in case. Here we have a really simple demonstration called the tea bag convection demonstration. Now we have here a tea bag. Now you have to make sure the tea bag folds out into a tube once you've taken the top and the tag off. I just need to cut off the edges so we have a really nice straight cut. And we're going to empty the contents out. And you should see that you have a tube from the tea bag, like so. Now we're going to put this tea bag on a non-flammable surface because we are using a match here to ignite this. So there is a, a fire risk. So make sure that your surface is non-flammable. So we're using a tile here. So a tile would be perfect or a dinner plate. And in fact, this demonstration harks back to demonstrations from dinner parties using amaretti papers. So you can use one of those folded into a tube, the old amaretti biscuits. What I'm going to do is using a match, ignite the paper at the top, and we should see the convection current builds up and we should see the paper lifting off. Here we have a lovely little science demonstration um, on the properties of CO2 and the effect of CO2 on a naked flame. Um, and by CO2, I mean carbon dioxide. Now, as I've mentioned, we're using a naked flame to make sure children are supervised and that you have non-flammable bits and pieces around it, don't have a Christmas party hat falling over into it, etc. Um, and for this demonstration, we're going to use some Alka-Seltzer, but any sort of stomach-settling brand will do. Anything that fizzes and produces carbon dioxide, so you might need to have a go. And around the Christmas time, you're always going to have products around this, like this, just in case of overindulgence. Now, I've got here a beaker, but you could use any cup or glass for this. And I've got a little bit of water in there, which we'll be able to see. And to that, I'm just going to add our Alka-Seltzer. And I'm just going to let it fizz for a bit. Now, the tablet's dissolving and it's fizzing, and it's producing carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide's heavier than air. So the carbon dioxide should actually fill up the glass bef before it sort of goes over the edge. It won't sort of go straight up. So it should sit in the glass because it's heavier than air. So I'm letting that fizz, so we're producing some carbon dioxide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out the carbon dioxide onto this naked flame. Now, if there is carbon dioxide in here, and if it's heavier than air, it should fall out of the beaker and extinguish the flame because it should surround it to stop the oxygen going around the flame to keep it going. So it should put out the flame, and that's how we'll prove there's CO2, carbon dioxide, in here, and that it's heavier than air. So our tablet's nearly dissolved. And we should magically extinguish the flame. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at conduction and convection using a candle, so again, naked flame, and a balloon. Now, I'm going to place this balloon on top of the candle. Now, the way I'm holding it, you can't see what's in the balloon, but most people would assume it's just a balloon, and if I put it on top of the candle, it would explode. But let's just see what happens. You can see the flames touching the balloon, but what you might just be able to make out now is that we've got some water in the bottom of that balloon. Now, that water in the balloon is actually conducting and convecting the heat away from the balloon surface to stop it bursting. So you, inside, the water's heating up, so some of the heat's being taken away by the water by convection. But also, the water, as it heats up, rises and gets replaced by cold water, which again is moving the heat away from the balloon surface. So the balloon should not burst. But always keep your fingers crossed, just in case. Now, as you can see there, the balloon has been getting hot, and we've got carbon on there. So I'm not, so I actually am holding it into the flame. 
If you hold it in long enough, you might even get the water to boil, but I wouldn't hold it in too long because you don't want to get it to get too hot. And also, the longer you leave it, the more likelihood of the balloon actually bursting. So I only leave that in there for a, a minute tops. And there we go. The magic balloon and water trick. Here we have an interesting white powder. Now, this white powder is a super absorbent polymer in a powder form, and it's the same sort of stuff you get in um, nappies, for instance. Now, what I'm going to do is take a few spoonfuls of this super absorbent polymer and put it into this beaker, and we'll see what it does. Now, you can buy this from toy shops and gift shops, and it's often called instant snow. Um, and that's why it makes such a nice little Christmassy science demonstration. So I'm going to take some spoonfuls, I'm going to put it into my water, and it should start to instantly absorb some of the water. And you can start to see it's getting more jelly-like. Starting to foam, I might just start to mix the powder slightly. Put some more in, just good again, give it a little mix. So it starts to absorb the water. You can already see we're getting a big volume of powder here. Another spatula, and again, a lot of mix down. Let all the particles absorb the water that's still down at the bottom. Like so. And we should have some instant snow. Loads to make a mess with.